Hello friends, welcome to this series of somatic motor system. In this series, we are going to learn about motor unit, muscle sensors, muscle tone, reflex arc, classification and properties of reflexes and different types of reflexes. We will also learn about the posture and we'll learn what is the role of tone and role of different regions of nervous system in maintenance of posture. We'll continue with vestibular apparatus and its role in maintenance of equilibrium. To start with, let us start with a quote by Charles Sherrington, which says, To move things is all that mankind can do. For such, the sole exequent is the muscle, whether it's whispering a syllable or felling a forest. We see that we involve a huge number, different types of skeletal muscles, may it be Either we are for dancing, for painting, for writing, for running, for walking, even for what I am doing right now, that is talking. We involve a huge number of different types of skeletal muscles. Coming to muscles, we have three types of muscles in our body, which we define as cardiac, skeletal and smooth. Coming to skeletal muscle again, we have a group of skeletal muscles which we use for different movements as well as for maintenance of our posture. To understand about the motor uh, functions and the motor axis of the nervous system, we need to first understand what is the somatosensory axis of the nervous system. To start with, we should know how is the sensory information sent to our higher centers. The sensory information that is of different types of sensations, different modalities of sensations, they are being sensed by variety of sensory receptors. So we have another video where we have talked about the somatosensory receptors in detail. We have talked about their properties. So you may go there to that video for your reference. To state here, there are different types of receptors. The one like free nerve endings for pain and temperature, maybe Pacinian corpuscles for pressure. Then we may have mesonous corpuscles for touch. Muscle spindles to sense the change in the muscle length. Golgi tendon operators to sense the tension in the muscles. Maybe receptors from the joint which are going to act as proprioceptors. So all the informations from all these receptors, they ascend up to the higher center via the ascending tract and they reach to the somatosensory cortex area which has been specified for that particular organ. As I have told you previously, once the somatosensory system gives the information to the cortex, the brain, what does it do? It receives the information, processes the information and based on the information plans a decision and this decision is conveyed via the descending tracts to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord ultimately to the effector organ which can be the muscle in this case or it can be any gland. So this whole of the system it forms our motor nerve axis. Very often it is asked what is a motor unit? The best to the answer is a single motor neuron, a single motor neuron this is one single motor neuron supplying to many muscle fibers is what is called as a motor unit. Students, what we have to specify on this is the word single. Here, the neuron, the motor neuron is a single neuron, but it will be supplying to many muscle fibers. So the definition of a motor unit is a single motor neuron supplying to many muscle fibers. Alpha motor neurons, they directly trigger the generation of force in the muscles. So this forms one single alpha motor neuron supplying to many muscle fibers will form a motor unit. So once this alpha motor neuron is stimulated, the impulses will travel along the exon. They will reach the neuromuscular junction and there, there will be events occurring which are termed as the events at the neuromuscular junction, that is neuromuscular transmission. I'm not going into detail about that. We can learn it in the other classes also. Now, what do I need to know 
that once the events have occurred at the neuromuscular junction, local potentials may be generated. These local potentials, once they reach the threshold level, may give rise to a muscle action potential. This muscle action potential is going to go for via the sarcolemma, it is going to go to the TT bule and thereby cause the release of calcium ions, which in turn are going to cause the contraction of skeletal muscles by the process of what we call as excitation, contraction, coupling. So that will be dealt in other classes. Now we all are concerned about is only the motor units. Muscle sensors, the main ones which we want to tell about is the muscle spindle, the first one. Muscle spindles, they are lodged inside the muscle belly and they are stretch receptors. They sense the change in the length of the muscle fiber. The other one is the Golgi tendon organs. The Golgi tendon organs, they are located in the tendons of the muscles and again they are receptors to sense the tension which is developed in the muscle. So these are the two main muscle sensors. What are these? Muscle spindle and Golgi tendon organ. So now we will go into detail and learn about the anatomy of muscle spindle, the different connections of the muscle spindle, what is the function of muscle spindle and what is the reflex arc in which the muscle spindle is involved and then we will further go on to learn about the Golgi tendon organ. Coming to the anatomical structure of the muscle spindle, let me tell you that these muscle spindles are stretch receptors and they are lodged inside the muscle belly. What we see here is a muscle belly which is mainly made up of the extrafusal fibers. Extrafusal fibers are the contractile parts of the muscle belly. Then coming to the muscle spindles, if you look at them, these muscle spindles, they are lodged inside the muscle belly and they are of two types, nuclear back fibers and nuclear chain fibers, which we will see it in the subsequent slides. But for now, you all have to know is that the middle or part of the muscle spindle is a non-contractile area. That means it doesn't have actin and myosin. What is present at the peripheral is the contractile elements. That's why we find the motor innervations towards the periphery and not in the central part of the muscle spindle. What are the sensory innervations to these muscle spindles? That is via 1A and type 2 fibers and the motor innervations is via alpha and gamma motor neurons. And if you look at the intrafusal, what are these intrafusal fibers? Intrafusal fibers are the fibers which are attached to these muscle spindles and they come and meet with the extrafusal fibers. They attach themselves to these endomyces. So muscle spindle S, if I remember S, I can donate that muscle spindle is responsible to sense the stretch as well as the speed of stretch means a change in the length and the length change, the rate of the change of the length of the muscle as well as the change in the length of the muscle. Now, I think this becomes more clear as to show which is a uh, nuclear back fiber and which is a nuclear chain fiber. Nuclear back fiber, it is little bit what you can say protruded in the middle, you know, it's like a bag, balloon in the middle and then you can see it becomes elongated at the periphery. Whereas we find a nuclear chain fiber which anatomically looks like a chain. Now, these middle parts of the muscle spindles, they are non-contractile elements. They don't, they don't have contractile elements. So what is their function? They actually are heavily innovated with the sensory nerve endings. Now, nuclear back fibers are actually, you know, wrapped around by the sensory nerve fibers and this is called as annulospiral sensory neurons. So these annulospiral neurons, they will come to the middle part of the muscle spindle, whether it's a nuclear back family or the nuclear chain fiber, they have wrapped themselves around here and these are the sensory nerve endings and this is called as annulospiral neurons and now they are going to take the impulses via 1A fibers and type 2 fibers to the spinal cord. So this will form a reflex. How is it will form a reflex? 
will have the sensory input which is going via these annulospiral endings to the spinal cord and it will go and innervate over the alpha motor neurons and will give some activation to the gamma motor neurons also. Now, where is this alpha motor neuron coming and innervating? The alpha motor neurons are exclusively going to the extrafusal fibers of the muscle belly, the contractile parts of the muscle belly, whereas the gamma efferent fibers are going to innervate the intrafusal fibers, especially at these end part where we have the contractile elements the structure of uh, muscle spindle. So as I have told you, muscle spindles are having two varieties or two types of uh, nerve fibers. One is called as the nuclear back fiber and the nuclear chain fiber. So in the center of the receptor area, we have a large sensory nerve fiber which is encircling the central portion of each intrafusal fiber and forms the primary afferent ends or the annulospiral endings. And these knife fibers are actually type A fibers. They form the primary afferents. How about the nuclear chain fiber? We have one more afferent nerve, what we call as the group 2 secondary fibers. We have these uh, group 2 fibers, which are called as the secondary afferent fibers. Now, group 1A and group 2 fibers, they ultimately go into the spinal cord via the dorsal root ganglion onto the alpha motor neuron. And there is no point of repeating again that we have the gamma efferents supplying to our uh, muscle spindles. There is, uh, for people who want to know a little more, there is something called as dynamic gamma fiber efferents and static gamma fiber efferents. So this slide shows us very clearly the reflex pathway. So let me tell you what is a reflex. When we go for a reflex arc, reflex is actually a response to any stimulus. When we go for any reflex arc, there are five components which we'll, we should always remember. What are those five components? Any reflex arc will have a receptor. In our case, who is the receptor? The muscle spindles. And where are these receptors located? In the middle part, sensory receptors are located in the middle part of the muscle spindle forming the annulospiral endings, then there should be an afferent nerve which is going to carry the information. So here the afferent fiber is my 1A fiber or type 2 fiber. Then it is passing via the posterior root ganglion and goes into the gray area, the horn area, the posterior horn and then it reaches to the anterior horn sides and then so what is the center here? So a reflex arc has a receptor, which is muscle spindle in this case, an afferent nerve, which is 1A and type 2 fiber, the center, which is the spinal cord, and then at the level of the spinal cord, these sensory inputs, they go and give the signal to the alpha motor neurons, as well as they also activate the gamma motor neurons. So what is alpha motor neuron going to do? Alpha motor neuron, this is my efferent nerve here. This is going to go and cause the contraction of the extrafusal fibers. And what is my gamma motor neuron going to do? The gamma motor neuron is going to go and cause the contraction of the contractile part of the muscle spindle. So just imagine as if, uh, uh, you know, you have a kind of, a plastic balloon which is bloated in the middle and it is kind of uh, you can say like pipe at the periphery. So the periphery is having the contractile elements. So once these structures which are present at the periphery when they contract they are going to pull the whole of the string or whole of the balloon. This is what happens with gamma motor fiber stimulation. I hope I make it little clear. So this forms my reflex arc, the five components of my reflex arc. So the name of this reflex is actually stretch reflex. So what is the stimulus here? Stretching of the muscle. Once there is a stretching of the muscle, who is sensing it? The muscle spindles. Why? Because muscle spindles are my stretch receptors. Then once they get stimulated, 
they start sending the impulses now let me tell you one thing that these fibers the afferent fibers they sense both stretching of the muscle spindle as well as unstretching of the muscle spindles okay so they kind of inform the center both when the muscle is stretched or when the muscle is unstretched so there will be impulses coming via the afferent fibers going to the center here the center is the spinal cord and then from there the efferent fibers the efferent fibers are my gamma efferent motor fibers and alpha motor efferent fibers alpha motor efferent fibers they are going to innervate they are going to go to the target area for alpha the target area is a contractile elements of the extra fusal muscle fibers whereas for gamma efferent fibers it is a contractile elements of the intrafusal fibers so ultimately with a stimulus of stretching there will be muscle contraction so there will be contraction of the muscle as a whole due to stimulation of alpha motor neuron what will happen with gamma motor neuron i'll talk about it in the next slides so it is showing the same thing intrafusal fibers having the innervations the sensory inputs is via a 1a fiber and group 2 fibers and the motor is through here the gamma dynamic and static so why do i say dynamic and static is when the muscle is in the process of stretching that information is also sent via the sensory fibers and when the muscle is back from a stretching you know it is unstretched so that period when it is stretching and unstretching that is dynamic state that's called as dynamic stretch reflex and when if the muscle is stretched and kept at one steady position that becomes the static stretch reflex so your uh, informations via these sensory inputs they will not only be only during at the time of stretching they will be both maybe more number of impulses are going to be sent the volume of impulses will be increased both at the time of stretching and at the time of unstretching but there may be a small reduction in number of impulses traveling when your muscles are at the stage of stretching means they are at a constant stage of stretching now what are the facts that we should remember about muscle spindle the three things we should never forget where are they located inside the muscle belly okay inside the muscle belly of what inside the extra fusal fibers the muscle spindles are located what are their functions they are very sensitive to the change in the length actually you know when there is a stretching as well as the rate of change in the length of the muscle then if that is the case they are mainly involved in stretch reflexes they are involved in deep tendon reflexes they are important for muscle tone they are important for posture they are important for the smoothing of what you can say the muscle movement so to go in detail about it we should first understand the stretch reflex i think then we can understand very well about the functions of the muscle spindle okay now here is a small circuit showing the stretch reflex so as i have explained you before a reflex will have five components the receptors the afferent nerves the center the efferent nerve and for this stretch reflex initial stimulus is stretching of the muscle spindle when there is a stretching of the muscle that will also cause the stretching of the muscle spindle and once this muscle spindle is stretched more number of inputs are going to go through the sensory afferent fibers and then in response to that what will happen more number of impulses will come via the motor nerve and the motor nerve are going to cause the contraction of the contractile elements so a response to stretch of a muscle is contraction of a muscle i think we have already seen this uh, diagram before so this is a diagram which you need to draw when you are asked to explain about the stretch reflex receptors afferent center efferent and how will you start with a reflex obviously the stimulus the stimulus is stretching so please spend some time here we have seen what is a stretch reflex and we have seen how muscle spindle is sensing this change in the muscle length when we are stretching a muscle it is sensing the change so even when it is unstretched also 
means coming back to its original position even then the muscle spindle is sensing so as a whole if you look at this reflex that when you stretch a muscle the response is contraction we find that muscle spindles they play a very important role and they form the receptor organ for the stretch reflex now coming to muscle tone this is another thing which we need to know that muscle spindles they maintain the tone and this tone maintenance via the muscle spindle is little difficult for us to understand because here is where we have to understand two things that when a stretch reflex uh, we have the afferent fibers going over to the alpha motor neurons i think i was mentioning in the previous slide also that they do stimulate the gamma motors also so the stimulation of alpha along with gamma is called as alpha gamma coactivation and alpha gamma coactivation is very much necessary for keeping to the muscle uh, intrafusal muscles contracted during the time of muscle contraction so i'll come back to we have uh, slides in the uh, you know preceding lectures where we are going to go and see about it for right now what we need to know is that the gamma motor neuron discharge so how is it going to function so i think for that i should come back to the reflex uh, arc to show you that how it is going to go and do about it tone is a steady state of contraction present in our body even at rest what does this mean that there will be always some sort of contraction which will be present in our muscles which are involved in our posture possibly or maybe those anti gravity muscles so there is always a steady state of contraction present in our body even at rest this is called as the tone or we even say that tone is the passive resistance to the stretching of a muscle or you can say whenever we are doing any movement the resistance that we get is what we call as the tone so to understand exactly as how this tone is being maintained by the muscle spindle let us first draw a muscle spindle and the circuit of it and try to understand this okay so for that let us first draw a circuit of it so let us take a muscle belly okay this is the muscle belly fine then what do we do we take the muscle spindles these are intrafusal fibers okay and then what do i see that intrafusal fibers we have the muscle spindles fine then next we have the annulospiral endings or the sensory inputs to the, attached to these ones and they are sending the information via the dorsal root ganglion into the spinal cord anterior horn cell of the spinal cord so if i take this as the anterior horn cell of the spinal cord and it goes and gives impulses to the alpha motor neuron and alpha motor neuron is supplying to whom it is supplying to the extrafusal fibers which are attached here these are my extrafusal fibers so intrafusal fibers and extrafusal fibers they kind of merge together okay so alpha motor neuron is supplying to the contractile fibers of my muscle belly then we have whom we have another fiber what do we call that fiber as we call it as gamma motor neuron and gamma motor neuron is going to supply to whom it is going to supply to the contractile parts of my intrafusal fiber so this is my intrafusal fiber and this is my extrafusal fibers okay now what do i say that there is always a small amount of contraction present even at during time of rest we have seen that during stretch reflex whenever there is stretching of these muscle belly there will be more information going via this dorsal root ganglion and 
there will be impulses more number of impulses coming from the alpha motor neuron and in turn causing the contraction so we started with stretch and we ended with contraction of the muscle now for tone we don't want whole of the muscle belly to go for contraction but we still want a small amount of contraction to be present in this muscle even at the time of rest how is this possible okay let us first think of the stretch reflex and then we can think about that so you remember when these fibers were stimulating the alpha motor neuron they were also giving some impulses stimulatory impulses to the gamma motor neuron also what did this gamma motor neuron do these gamma motor neurons what did they do they cause the contraction of these intrafusal fibers and when there is contraction of these intrafusal fibers so if these are the intrafusal fibers and here is the what you can the annulo spiral ending intrafusal fibers and we have the gamma motor neuron here so when this is stimulating this part there will be contraction so there will be shortening of these fibers when they are being shortened what is happening to the muscle spindle that is being stretched okay on stretching so there will be slight stretching here once these nuclear back fibers are stretched these annulo spiral endings which are present there as sensory fibers they start giving the impulses via the dorsal root ganglion to the spinal cord so this kind of a loop starts what is called as gamma loop what is it happening the gamma fibers they are getting stimulus they are getting some impulses they are causing the contraction of the extrafusal fibers once these extrafusal fibers are contracted they are causing the stretching of the muscle spindle stretching of the muscle spindle again is leading to a small contraction in the muscle this is how the tone is being maintained so the third function of the muscle spindle is that it has an important role in maintaining the skeletal muscle at a certain physiological length how does it mean so as we have seen that muscle spindles they act as comparators comparators in the sense they even sense the stretching of the muscle the unstretched muscle and during the time of stretching so three situation is there at the time of stretching when it is in a process of stretching then it is remaining as stretched and then it is coming back again to unstretched so there are three different stages of this muscle length what is your muscle spindle going to do it acts as a comparator so in the sense it is going to give impulses both at the first stage at the last stage and even at the middle stage middle stage means when it is at the stage of stretched so by kind of you know sensing different by uh, sending different amount of action potentials for different stages of muscle stretching muscle spindle acts as a comparator which is kind of telling that what is exact length of the muscle belly the extrafusal fibers okay so we know that they have a role in stretch reflex so they act as a feedback device who is going to maintain the skeletal muscle at a certain physiological useful length so particularly we are talking about the anti gravity muscles where we need to maintain the tone for a longer period of time to maintain a standing posture then it even has a role as proprioceptor what is the role in proprioceptor especially unconscious proprioceptions what is this conscious and unconscious conscious is when you are aware of your movement especially when you are writing doing any voluntary movement you are walking running you know these all are conscious movements but when you are swinging your hand while you are walking so these is something which is unconscious proprioception you are standing for long time you are sitting for long time you don't need to you know be very cautious about your position all the time so this is what you called as unconscious proprioception so muscle spindle since it senses the change in the muscle length and it changes the speed in the the rate of change in the muscle length it kind of gives an information to the brain as what is the position of the muscle in our body one more thing i would like to add over here is that the gamma motor neuron not only has a facilitatory impulses coming on to it 
or you can say always a stimulatory command coming to it but rather it also is having inhibitory input from the higher centers so it's kind of you can say addendum of uh, in stimulatory and inhibitory influence of gamma motor neuron which actually determines the range and smoothness of the muscle movement so how can i prove this that muscle spindles are involved in smoothing of the muscle uh, movement is this experiment which has been in this what it has been shown is we have a which is a normal muscle and we have curve b in which uh, the muscle spindles were denervated by the section of posterior roots of the cord 82 days previously means we had come over the spinal shock and now what is that we are going to see as what happens when we stimulate the muscle so one which is normal will have you know for any movement when we suppose we are trying to reach up a cup we just don't go in a jerky way isn't it we don't have a uh, increase tone then decrease tone then increase tone we kind of uh, go in a very smooth way now this smooth transaction of the muscle to reach out the target object is basically you know it involves many organs it in uh, i can say many system of the central nervous system but muscle spindle also plays a role this experiment is actually a proof to that when it is a normal you find that you know the force of contraction you find for 8 seconds suppose you have given a stimulus what do you look at the force of contraction yes it increases but it smoothly remains over there but how about a one which is uh, denervated we find a jerky type of response there is no one to smoothen the muscle contraction the force of contraction is not smoothened rather it is jerky so this experiment proves that muscle spindles are also involved in smoothening of the muscle movement here are my references and i acknowledge where i have taken the slides the pictures and the text two major textbooks which i have referred is by gaitin and one is by genong and there are few internet materials so i acknowledge them for these materials thank you